like entropy i would never use entropy entropy is computer ai and i don't trust it i people only Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classics with a Quirk, where we talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. This is the kind of content that you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. A few weeks ago, I made a video on how to buy luxury goods on the Japanese pre-love market using a proxy service called Baiyi. Now, I made that video without ever having contacted Baiyi before besides actually utilizing the service. I bought through them and had nothing to do with them in any way, shape, or form aside from buying through them. However, after I made that video, like after it went up and people watched it, Baiyi actually contacted me. They reached out and wanted to know if they'd, I'd be interested in them sponsoring another video and providing you with a discount code to shop with them. And I used their service and didn't expect this to happen at all, but I thought that was really cool and I did say yes. So full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Baiyi, but I use them and I've been using them. And so the fact that they wanted to work with me is super cool. In the description box down below, you're going to get a coupon code for first time users that we will get 20,000 yen off of your first purchase, which is approximately $20 give or take. So in the event that you want to sign up for Baiyi after watching either of my videos, you can use that link to get a discount off. That's not an affiliate link. I've just been sponsored for the video. I'm not making any money from you using the code. In regards to what I wanted this video to be about though, I had been planning to make a shop with me on Baiyi video even before Baiyi contacted me. So I thought this was a really good opportunity to do so. In light of all the recent luxury price increases that have been happening lately, I think that pre-love buying has also gotten more and more interest in the past few months. So I just wanted to give you another resource and way that you can buy pre-love luxury goods in a way that I find is pretty safe and also pretty convenient. And I kind of wanted to use the website together with you and have you watch me kind of browse and sort of see what I look for and how I look for things. Like this is the pre-love market. I made a previous video on how to buy vintage Louis Vuitton on eBay. And that video, I'll link it for you. I think it's a pretty good one. It's good for buying pre-love Louis Vuitton kind of in general, really. It shows you what to look for, what things are not so good condition, what things are. So it, it's a good video. I do recommend checking it out. But this would be more of a as we go sort of thing. You can see exactly what I look for as I look for it. So I just thought that would be sort of fun. Now I did talk about this a little bit in more depth in my previous video about Baiyi, but before I do browse, I do want to just let you know of a couple of things. First of all, that there is a fee to use Baiyi. That you, it's about 500 yen, something like that, to, to proxy fee, and then there's an insurance amount that you can tack on. I, If I'm buying luxury goods, I, I do purchase the insurance plan, you know, just to be safe. And also there is a import customs duty fee, like customs and taxes, in the event that you buy an item over a specific amount. So for America, that amount is over 800 USD. So if I'm buying an item and I'm from Japan through Baiyi for over 800 USD, I do have to pay approximately 10% in customs and duties. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you are buying something overseas, make sure that you know the customs and duties that you have to pay to get it imported into your country. Otherwise you might get slammed for like an additional $400 fee if you're buying a $4,000 handbag or something. And that's not super pleasant to go in on a expected. I have a couple of small other goods that I want to keep an eye out for as I browse today, some of which you might recognize from my wishlist video that I put out a little while ago too, but I'm also keeping an open mind for what I see and that's part of what's fun. It's kind of like browsing eBay in a way. I mean, it is essentially Japanese eBay. If you use the auction site, you just kind of get to see all these different things from a bunch of different sellers. And th there's a huge variety of luxury goods available in Japan on the pre-love market. So it's just, it's fun to see what's out there. So I'm going to scooch over a little bit. So you're going to be able to see my screen as I browse on Baiyi. And I'm going to just set up the screen record now. All right, so first I'm going to the Baiyi website and I'm already logged in and I'm going to go to the auction site first. And again, the video that I put out previously kind of shows you more how to navigate Baiyi. So I'm not going to repeat on like exactly what I'm doing here, but this is more like the browsing aspect of the shop with me as it were. So first of all, I do have some categories already saved and Baiyi is a Japanese platform. So I have my categories saved in Japanese. So the first thing that I'm going to look for that I have been interested in trying to find is a Louis Vuitton cherry blossom pochette. So I'm going to go to that category. I already have the search saved for Louis Vuitton cherry blossom. So there's a couple of pink ones here. I do want the monogram with the pink flowers. And there's this one for 88,000 yen. It's currently selling for 788 USD. So let's see. Uh, 
and you cannot bid on this auction because the seller does not allow bank transfer. So that does happen sometimes. Some sellers don't want to deal with foreign clients for, you know, a variety of reasons. And so they won't allow you to bid on certain auctions if, you know, they, they understand that you're using like a proxy service. So I cannot bid on that. Oh, well, forget that then. So more pink, more pink. Here's a pochette, but it's for 1,326. It's a little bit high for me. Here's one for 97,232 yen, so $871, which isn't a bad price considering that this is, you know, a vintage pochette in a limited edition, you know, style and pattern. So let's see here. This ends in four days and there is a very good, very high seller rating. You can see they've got over 47,000 good reviews and only 220 bad reviews. And that's something you want to keep in mind, just like on eBay, when you are looking to buy a more expensive item, you want to make sure that you're going with a seller that has a large amount of ratings and primarily positive ratings, of course. You're much more likely to be safe in an auction with a known seller. Now, I will mention that Baiyi does not authenticate. They do not guarantee authenticity. They are just a proxy buying service. So you want to make sure that you are buying from a reputable seller that does have a lot of reviews because there is a chance that if you're buying from like a smaller seller that you might get something that might end up being inauthentic. It's not as high of a chance as you are likely to get on the American market because Japan does have a lot of anti-counterfeit rules, but there is still a chance. You want to make sure that you are buying from a reputable seller because those are the sellers that will get major repercussions if they're found out to be selling inauthentic pieces. So they're much more on top of making sure that they don't, they do not want in any way, shape or form to be accused of selling an inauthentic piece because that would, that could ruin their business. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Some people on my last video did comment on the fact that Baiyi does not guarantee authenticity. And that is something that, you know, I felt was prudent to mention. There are some very good pros, but there are the cons of you, you don't have anything guaranteed. You just want to be careful as with buying anything online. And of course, I would suggest authenticating the piece after you receive it. For most luxury goods, I do use real authentication, not sponsored to authenticate my pieces. I do have a discount code for new users if for like $5 off if you're interested. I'll put that in the description down below as well. But the nice thing about real authentication is that they use people. Like Entropy, I would never use Entropy. Entropy is computer AI and I don't trust it. I people only, people only and real authentication does use them, they're a repeatable company. So that's who I would suggest for authentication from a third party. Anyway, back to this pochette. So let's see here. Let's look at the details. Okay, so it's got a really nice honey color patina on it. I don't love the fact that there aren't that many flowers on the front, but let's see here. It's very clean inside. Corners look good and the studs look also really nice it's again honey patina there's a little bit of staining right here but that's honestly very negligible a little bit of wear okay in the stitching there's a split but that's that's also not really too bad some dings on the hardware not a big deal then yeah that's a really nice patina i wish there was a picture of the back of the pochettes because you only in this one see the front which i don't love it's pretty like the patina is very nice that's the best part and the the flowers look to be in really good shape they don't have the chipping that you often see on older uh, screen printed pieces limited edition pieces but again there's not a lot of the pink on the front and if there were more pink on the back that would be something to consider but because i can't see the back i don't know so i'll i'll favorite it uh and just like maybe come back to it later go back here and then we've got an umbrella for almost $900, no thank you. A new pochette for a buyout of $1,500, $1,400. Mm, little bit high for what I want to pay, $1,300 also a little bit high. You've got the belts, wallets, some of the, what's it called? The Papillon bags, key pouch. All right, so it doesn't look like there's a lot here right now listed. Oh, there's one for 99,222 yen, so about 890, plus you want to tack on about the 10% plus the shipping, so it would be probably about a, an extra $100, so it would maybe end up being like 1100-ish after all the taxes, fees, and shipping and stuff. Oh, that's another thing. Baiyi does, it's, it's, you have to pay shipping on top of everything, so Baiyi will get the item to their warehouse, and then you'll be charged a shipping fee to ship the item from Baiyi to you. It's not usually that expensive. It depends on how much you're buying and how heavy it is, obviously. I usually pay between like 
15 to $30 it depending and they use DHL. So it's, it's a good, very fast shipping method and you can, you know, pick from the options. I mentioned this in my last video too, but just something to keep in mind. You have to tack on shipping on top of, you know, the, the fees that you expect. So let's look at this pochette. So say 1100 after everything. It's bidding only, but it's only got one day to go and there are no bids on it. And it looks like, again, the seller rating is really good. Almost 7,000 good reviews and only like 70 bad ones. So let's look at the pochette. It's a nice honey patina, and I kind of like the flowers on this one more. There aren't as many. Still, there's not a lot of flowers, but I like the grouping of them. And let's see here. Oh, and the back is really nice, some big ones. And let's see, there's not a lot of damage or chipping on these flowers. They look bright and pink. There's some chipping in the corner. You can kind of see right there. But for the most part, it looks really good. Again, a nice honey patina. Yeah, here's a picture where you can see the chipping and it, it's really not that bad. You're gonna get that kind of corner wear generally with a piece this old. This is probably from the early 2000s. Yeah, chipping's not that terrible. I like that the big flowers, it's very clean inside. Bottom looks good for the most part. Yeah, this is pretty. For 1100 after everything, that's not terrible. I, I will favorite that as well and then go back. And that's the other thing, you can favorite items. So you can like look at stuff, kind of like eBay, you, you get a watch list and you can look at items later. So I think those are the two big ones. Everything else, yeah, like 2000 is too much for me. The pink Papillon is cute, but I'm not interested in a Papillon bag. And let's see, 985 buyout. So this one is a bidding item, so you can bid on it, but then you can buy out the price. It doesn't look like anybody's bidding on it though. So you might end up getting it for the 88.7. And that's also really, oh, I like this grouping too, actually. And it comes with the box, it looks like. I, I'm not looking at the descriptions on these items just because none of these items are ones that I'm super interested in yet. But if I was interested in an item, like really, I would be looking at the description too. So let's see here. I like the grouping of the flowers. They don't seem to be really chipped. There's some water spots on the uh, Vachetta, but not really that bad. It's a nice patina. The flowers look good for the most part. Corners look good. Not a lot of chipping on this. Okay, this was in 2003, made in France. I mean, most of these pieces were. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the hardware looks good. The vachetta looks good. And again, if I won this for the bidding price, excuse me, if I won it for the bidding price, it's 99,000 yen. So after taxes and shipping and duties and everything, about 1,100, 18 hours to go. So let's see here. What is more about the item? I'm using Google Translate for the description because it's pretty easy. It comes with the bar box. All of the leather part is burnt. There's no fatal damage or damage and it can be used without any problems at present. Yeah, that's kind of what it looked like. Uh, because of it is a used item, those who will be understanding of used items and recycling, thank you for your bid. Not the best to translate, thank you Google, but not bad. Yeah, there's nothing mentioned. Japanese sellers will usually disclose things like a smell, anything like that. So I'm not seeing that disclosed. So I would be cool with receiving something in this condition. Again, a 2000-ish rating, 1900 rating, and 1900 are good, eight are bad. That's not bad. Okay, I'm gonna, I favorited that one too. And I think I'm gonna just go through the next couple of pages really fast. Oh, that's it, forget it, that's all. Okay, so that's the cherry blossom. I favorited three items and I looked at one that was pretty nice, but nothing that like stood out to me. Let's see what we've got in, hmm, I'm not sure if I should look at Louis Vuitton again or maybe I should just like peek at Chanel. I like to browse, that's, you know, part of the fun. So let's see. Why don't I look at what they've got in the Chanel uh, stitch line. So I've been looking for a chevron piece and Japanese sellers call that V-stitch. So if you search V-stitch Chanel, you're gonna find things in that chevron design. But if you search just stitch, you're gonna find more things that aren't necessarily in chevron, but you will also find more things in diagonal quilting because you know it's just a matter of what they put. 
So this is 786, 768 hits, excuse me, newly listed. And okay, here's a denim Leo Lion bag. I believe that's denim or, you know, jersey. Cannot bid in this auction. Okay, what's the seller? Reference 2000. Okay, so I'm going to keep reference 2000 in mind because if that's a shop that I can't bid on, then I'll just stop clicking on their auctions. So forget that. I mean, it's cute to look at though. Some bags here, top handles, some wallets, boots. So let's just see the next picture. Some brands I do recognize, some sellers I do recognize, like Sell Soul I recognize, Brand Off, Penguin Account, that's one that I've seen a lot that I do trust, they're reputable. Yeah, Soul Sell over here. Let's see, a lot of totes. So there's a chocolate bar bag from Penguin Account, some camera bags. Wild Stitch patent. I would never buy patent. I would. I don't think I would ever buy a patent luxury piece. Vernie patent anything like that. I I love patent actually. I love the feel of it. I think it's really interesting and fun and like slick and smooth and it's cool. It wears terribly and so I would buy a non-luxury patent. Uh, luxury I don't think it would be worth the money to buy a patent honestly. That's my opinion. Let's see here. Oh, here's a, a moon bag, reference 2000 though, so I'm not gonna bother clicking on it. Some boy bags, a card holder. Okay, is it an interesting one? Oh, bigger quilts from Tamaya 7830, $354 after the yen conversion. Can't bid on this auction. Okay, forget you then. It looks like a wild stitch uh, card holder though. Not having the best luck so far. Maybe I shouldn't have gone with Chanel. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Reference 2000. A lot of reference today. Maybe, you know what, if this is, I'm searching by newly listed just to see what's new, and they probably just listed a whole bunch of stuff all at the same time, which is what a lot of, you know, listers do. They just list everything they can at the same time because that's when they have the opportunity to do so. I might end up just browsing in Chanel shoulder bags and seeing what is there because I'm not seeing anything particularly interested, that I'm particularly interested in the V-stitch pattern for like a price that I'd be willing to pay. There's a wild stitch bag for 2,200. Oh look, I actually could buy this if I was so inclined. And I actually really like the wild stitch patterns. I think they're really pretty. I don't like the ones that are pure shoulder bags though, like this one is, because I do like the option to do crossbody or long shoulder. And you'll notice that this one just has the one chain, but it looks to be in really good shape. It's a, I think it's a cute style. It's a seasonal style that I don't see a lot, but it's one that I really like. All right, not some bad wear either. Let's see here. Yeah, it looks like it's in good shape. I don't see a picture of the authenticity card, so I don't think that it comes with one. Yeah, you'll see that there's a little bit of crinkling on the back and on the front, which again, this is kind of something that the wild stitch patterns do have just because of the way that the stitching was. So let me just check the more about. I don't think that it would come with, yeah, wild stitch season. Uh, comes with the storage box. So okay, it comes with the box, but it doesn't come with like the authenticity card. And there wasn't a picture of the authenticity serial seal. And usually when a Japanese seller lists what the bags will come with, they'll list serial seal as an accessory. So if it doesn't say serial seal, probably it doesn't come with the serial either intact. And I am getting looser on whether or not I want to have the authenticity card for a vintage piece because these pieces are older pre-love pieces, you know, older I understand the authenticity card can sometimes get misplaced. So I'm a little bit less I need it for the authenticity card for the right piece. Depends on the piece, but for the right piece. But I, I have to have a serial sticker intact. I, I do insist on that. So I will not buy something without the in, uh, intact serial number. With, I think, the exception of like very specific vintage bags, like there are certain like wallet on chain flat style bags, if I find one, I'll show it to you, that have fabric interior and the bag itself is very old. And those bags are notorious for the serial stickers falling off because it just didn't stick very well to the fabric lining. So maybe for those bags, but those bags also tend to be like snap button closures and I don't particularly like those anyway. So it, it's usually a moot point. Okay, some totes here. And we're still in the V-stitch category. 
All right, you know, I'm gonna just browse in Chanel shoulder bags in general to see what is new here. So I'm gonna just click on any listing. Here we go. And you'll see here it says like auction fashion by label Chanel bag shoulders. So if I click shoulders, I'll just see all the bags that are in the shoulder bag category that are newly listed here. And like, oh, okay, here's a half moon already by Loop JPN 2016 for 2,900. Can't bid on this auction for, uh, what's with all these new people that I can't bid on the auctions for? Oh, hey, this is a tweed nylon piece, I think. This one, let's see. Yeah, this is, uh, gosh, I don't remember what collection this is from, but I believe this is a, like, tweed style nylon piece or canvas piece. I think this is canvas, actually. And it's really cute. It's, it's a, I, I, I don't remember what season this is from, excuse me, but I do recognize the style. And it is a, a pretty unique piece, I think. 23, 29 USD on top of like the, you know, 2300, 2050, 250, excuse me, like tack on. So like 2350 plus 250 mental math is not my strong suit. So it would be mm, about 2600, $2,700 after the fact. And it comes with card. It doesn't look like there's a lot of wear on it either. And there's the inner lining. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is a beautiful piece. It's got the little clover accent. Gosh, what was this collection from? I can't remember. It's it's escaping me. Like, I know what it is. And there's the serial number here. It's a, is that a nine series? I think it's a nine, maybe. Uh, let's check more about the item. Comes with the accessory guarantee card. Not a lot of description here. Okay. Yeah, it says it's canvas, which that's what I thought. And it's, it's a lower seller rating, so 436 sales. Uh, I would think about it. I don't know if I love this piece that much to go with a lower seller rating on this point, so I might skip it. But it is a beautiful bag. I'm just scrolling down here to see what other options are just right listed. Okay, that's a cute tote. And you'll see some of these are for very, very low prices, like 71 yen, 5,000 yen. Those are because they're auctions. And as the auction progresses, like in the very last few minutes, they're gonna skyrocket. Oh, there's my bag. I own this flap. Let's see. Yeah, that's my single flap. I own this with the, uh, not the bijou chain though. I own mine with the leather interwoven chain. It's very pretty though. Comes with card. Currently at one, currently at 123,000 yen with five bids. That's gonna skyrocket, I'm sure. Okay, let's go back to shoulder back, see what else is there. Now, again, you can use search terms to get specific things in your search, obviously, like I did with the cherry blossom and I did with the V-stitch. Sometimes it's fun to just browse just to see what is there, because I like finding new styles, and sometimes you do find a gem by accident just because your keywords and their keywords are different. Oh, there's a really pretty pink bag. Top handle, 4200. Candela. Mm. All right, I'm gonna just look at this style. Okay, it's pretty. It's not quite a trendy. It's like a seasonal and lambskin beautiful condition, it looks like. Okay, there's some corner well, some sideware over there. Can't, doesn't matter anyway, I can't bid on it. <laughs> You're gonna find a lot of flaps, single flaps and otherwise on the Chanel pre-loved market on Japan, in Japan, on the Japanese market. Some of that made sense. There are going to be a lot of double flaps available on the pre-loved market in varying conditions in the Japanese market just because there are so many out there. Japan is a huge consumer of luxury goods and also some of these sellers sell from like, you know, Singapore, China, Hong Kong. They, they sell as proxies from other places too. And there's just, there's a huge market in Asia in general for luxury. So there's also a lot of turnover, especially recently for vintage pieces as people, you know, sell off their vintage pieces to buy newer pieces or they retire their collections for whatever reason. So you're going to find a lot of variety on the pre-love market in Japan, as opposed to sometimes like with Fashion File or Rebag, you get like the 
12 things that they have for the prices that they post and there's not a lot of wiggle room or eBay which is different to navigate sort of thing so oh, there's a Kanban tote and looks like a silver another Kanban tote in black very pretty Kanban tote in beige with the black let's see not something that I'm super interested in right now I used to be interested in the Kanban tote in pink like the smaller size but I ended up missing out on getting it when it was like under a thousand dollars and I haven't found one that I'm interested in paying over a thousand for. It's a beautiful bag I think personally but I don't need a tiny tote that's from Chanel anyway. <laughs> I don't need a tiny pink Chanel tote. So let's see here. Oh here's a half, here's a double flap wallet on chain with the turn lock. That's Otakuria. I can't bid on them because they're the the ones remember the Otakaria. I can't bid on them low seller rating, and that is because their ratio is bad. They have 250 bad reviews. But I wanna just show you this style. So this is a double flap moon wallet on chain or moon flap bag, basically, and you'll see those two flaps in the front. That's because they each individually lift up. One lifts up to the, the bigger compartment and then the other lifts up to a smaller front compartment. I think they're beautiful bags. Oh, and this is one of the bags that are fabric lined, so the serial number often comes off. And you'll see here that it's got a zipper in the front flap, front pocket, and yeah, you can see the fabric lining here. I think they're beautiful bags, but I don't think that they're super useful bags. Like, they're very small, and the shoulder strap on these bags, and you do, it does have the turn lock though, which is nice, as opposed to the snap. The drop length on these bags are shoulder only, like they're not long enough to be crossbody unless you do a very, very, very high crossbody. It's they kind of, you know, it's a, it's a shorter shoulder strap. It's not like under your arm, but it's a medium length. That doesn't make sense, but I think they're beautiful. I think it's a, it's a really pretty design style. This is a 90s design style. Most of these are. So let's go back here. Then we might take a break from Chanel just because I'm interested in saying, oh, there's a really pretty beige camera bag. 7,000 plus yen though. Oh, oh, and here's a beige half moon, also from Otakaria. You'll also notice sometimes that the sellers that you're not allowed to bid on happen to have really lower prices. And I don't necessarily know what that always means, but it is just something to keep in mind. Like if you see a item for a really good deal, then it turns out to be one that you can't bid on because they've got a low seller in ratings. So, uh, oh, there's a Paris, Paris flap for about 2,500 yen dollars. 2,500 yen would be amazing. This is the Paris flap. The, I think they're called the Paris exclusive or just the Paris flap. They're the flap bags that are double flap bag, but they have the mixed metal CC. So they've got a CC in silver and gold and this like edged border thing. And I think this is Penguin account. I'll double check when I'm done looking at the pictures. But again, Penguin account is a reputable one. I would go with Penguin account if I see something from them. I've got the half moon pocket on the back and the double chains. This one is basically like a slightly taller medium flat bag. It's also got the double flap. You'll see here not a lot of wear on the bottom or the corner. Bottom looks good. CC turn locks looks good. You'll notice that there's the stamping on the CC which shows that it is a gold alloy plated bag. The leather through the chains look good and the hardware looks nice. This is really pretty. And all right, the inside flap does look like it's got a lot of wear. It's very crinkly, which is something that you will often find in pre-love bags, especially the ones that have the burgundy interior. The inside inside flap with the burgundy interior will often look like crinkly and sort of warped. And that can be from usually improper storage, like the bag might have gotten like too humid or wet or over time. Just, uh, I don't know why that happened. Yeah, so. I don't love that aesthetic. I think that it looks kind of, it looks more damaged to me than anything else. But it is otherwise a, you know, very nice bag. And if you ended up winning it for the, the $2,500, which is what it's being sold for, then you'd get a beautiful bag with an outward appearance and only the inside would be a little bit off and you're the only person who would know that. And yeah, this is Penguin Account. 
And let's see, rank A, okay, and it doesn't come with the seal or the card. So you see how it says no seal, no card? That means that it doesn't come with the authenticity card, but it also doesn't have the serial seal inside the bag. So that's not something that I would go for personally anyway. But then it's just like rank A, it's pretty good, which I, I think that is a reasonable rating. Like even if the inside is a little bit crinkly, if the outside of the bag is pretty flawless, like I think an A rating is reasonable. There's a mini with a bijou chain. That's really pretty. Four to hundred though, minis have skyrocketed. Used to be able to find mini Chanel flaps on any market for like under a thousand preloved, especially the vintage ones. And now they're, they're sometimes more expensive than the non vintage minis. Like it's crazy. I mean, the prices of luxury are going up every day, all the time. Ooh, all right, some nice stuff here. Okay. Oh, there's uh, the Mademoiselle flat bag that I have, $4,700 for that bid. It's beautiful though. I mean, obviously it's beautiful. I have one now and I adore it. It is so nice. Yeah, there's actually some more divots on this one in the corners. So you can see on the edges, the sides, the sides is what I meant. Like you see how they're dipped in. So that's not great. I mean, it doesn't take away the beauty of the bag altogether, but it is something that I notice and mine doesn't have nearly as many dips. I, and you, yeah, you've got the dips in the back too, the wrinkly, and it's, you know, a little bit bulge on the side. You can see the dips up closer here. Yeah, I personally think the one I have is in better condition and it came with the authenticity card too. The gold on this looks really good though. The hardware is very nice but I have mine and I'm very happy with it. And I got it for much less than $4,700. And I wanna just look at this one for 3,200. Well, 360,800 yen, but you know what I mean. I'm gonna go with USD, six days to go, and 32 plus 3,250-ish. So yeah, like 30, what, 3,600? after tax, like 36. I always round up just to be safe. So like 3,600, 3,700 in this beautiful red with the bijou chain. And notice the detail on that turn lock. I really like this turn lock detail. I've seen it in a lot of vintage bags and it is, it is gorgeous. So just something to note, it's beautiful red. This is a very nice size. Okay, there's a lot of color transfer on the back. Not too bad, honestly for a bag like this, and I would care more about the front anyway. Corners look good. Wow, look at that. Look at that gold hardware, that is gorgeous. Comes with the authenticity card too, nice. I don't know if it comes with a serial seal because I don't see a picture of it, but the inside also, I keep going back and forth, the inside also looks really good. Let's see what the details of this are. Okay, it comes with the guarantee, no seal. Yeah, you see it doesn't come with the serial seal. And it has a small thread on the front and it hasn't been repainted as stated. They often do state that. And it looked shiny enough that I wouldn't be concerned about repainting. It's a beautiful red, but that's a vintage red color that I see a lot. Like that particular shade is a red color I see often with that like specifically kind of orangey undertone. So, that's probably original color. Like you see here, this bag also has kind of the exact same red. So they're probably from the same, around the same time. This camera bag with the bijou chain too and the beautiful hardware. Yeah, that's really pretty. That's really nice. It doesn't have the turn lock, but I love the bijou chain. I really would like a, a, a piece with the bijou chain. Some more minis. Oh, there's a Diana, 4,700. That's not surprising for a Diana. Some, and you see like you've got the trapezoid here, you've got the top handle bag here. You get some really interesting designs that you don't often see on the, the American market or the English speaking market, certainly and not as often. And so it's just, it's just fun to browse and see what styles there are that you might not have known existed. Let's see here, we've got some patent stuff, a uh, metallic patent, a low moon flap. I don't like the pleats on that though. There's either a canvas or a suede. It looks like canvas. There's a moon flap. 
camera bag. Oh, the moon flap in white. That's a really good price. I wonder what's wrong with it. It's really... I do like the moon flap style, but I prefer it in, in black. They come in black, red, and white. I actually never seen a moon flap in navy or beige. They probably come in a beige. I've just never seen one myself. And you see how it's got this black lining inside of it, and that's also a fabric. And that's probably not going to have a serial seal just because the fabric lining again doesn't tend to have those. You've got the little CC medallion zipper pull. You're going to see the CC medallion zipper pull is something you're almost always going to see on zippers in vintage bags. And if your bag doesn't have one, it's either missing or it's a bag you might want to be concerned about because they, they made those across the board for a number of years. Oh, here's one. I think this is the turtle not the turtle dove, the, the tortoise shell. The tortoise shell turn lock and hardware, is that what this is? Yeah, it is, wow. You don't see tortoise shell. I think it's called the tortoise shell. It's a T something. It's that, this particular type of um, like patterns, rock, <laughs> not rock, but like it's, I mean, this is plastic. It's a, a man, my words are going today. It's a plastic resin, thing that is in this particular pattern. It's the resin that was made on a few styles in the 90s. They're, they're fairly rare pieces, I think, and obviously in good condition because it's enamel. It, it can wear down over time a little bit worse than leather does, but you'll see these patterns in this like beigey yellow. So that's interesting. How much is this being sold for? 3,800. Yeah, that's, um, that's actually a little low for a tortoiseshell piece, but I am going to guess that there's some extra wear on it. You know, see the beautiful Chanel in the tortoiseshell. If I'm not saying it right, and I'm saying tortoiseshell, and it's the wrong thing, I'm going to be really mad at myself when I edit this video, but hopefully you know what I mean. So yeah, there, yeah, there's, there's a lot of, there's some corner wear, yeah, and that's probably why it's priced the way it is, because it is priced to the condition of the bag. So even though it's a rarer piece, with the fact that the corners are worn the way they are, and yeah, you can see that, then it's going to be priced lower because it's reasonable. There's some glue residue over there, a little bit of frayed stitching, more glue residue. But look at that. Okay, and yeah, so there's some more wear away that's worn into the lining of the, the stitching. So that's where the color in the leather has worn away some. Pretty bag though, very pretty bag. Uh, good collector's piece too, if somebody wanted to. Oh, and SPI Kai, that's another seller that I would recommend. They've got great ratings, I've bought from them before. All right, so we've been going for a while and I don't know if there's anything here. I found a few cherry blossom bags and a couple of them I were interested in. Oh, look at this wicker one. Obviously, yeah, it's gonna be almost $8,000. And yes, yeah, so you're not gonna be able to bid on something with this high a price unless you get special allocations from Baiyi, but I just wanna show this bag to you because this is a vintage wicker Chanel bag, wicker and leather and the gold alloy hardware. And this is a collector's piece like no other really. It looks like it's in beautiful shape too. Wow. You see that it's like just a short chain, so the wicker looks to be in pretty good shape. It doesn't look like there are any cracks on this side. A little bit of wear right there and at the bottom, but really nothing that bad. That's beautiful, and you'll see, yeah, that's got the, the chain, so this was like a long shoulder, possibly crossbody bag. It's beautiful. And it's got the serial seal intact. Probably not the card. Yeah, no card, but serial seal intact. It's a five series. Yeah, wow beautiful piece. You don't see a lot of intact vintage Chanel wicker uh, for a reason. <laughs> that's that's a shelf piece for sure. That's a collector's item. I'm currently thinking about the the one of the cherry blossom pochettes, especially in terms of the price increases that Louis Vuitton have had so far. You know, with the pochette accessoire being so expensive now, it's going to only make the pre-love market pochette accessoire skyrocket in price too. So I kind of am thinking about wanting to get that sooner over later. I know it's still pretty early in the year, but no harm in checking off wishlist pieces that you've been wanting for a long time early in the year if you can. I don't know. 
What do you think? Do you think that I should take a second look at any of the Chanel pieces or the Cherry Blossom Pochette? Please let me know in a comment down below and if there's anything else that you saw that you were interested in, also please feel free to leave a comment. Let me know by the way if you like these shop with me videos because I would do more of them if this was something that you were interested in. It was fun so please just let me know. If you are interested in using Bai for the first time, again I have a code that you can or a link that you can use to get 20,000 yen off of your first purchase and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. It super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content that helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.